we are asking people to unlearn so much of what they have been presented with in public school textbooks and in popular culture. And so it's a long and ongoing task to teach people a more accurate history of Texas, but also of the United States more broadly. I am Monica Munoz Martinez, and I am a public historian. I grew up learning a history of the U.S.-Mexico border that was drastically different from what I learned in school. So many of the community histories had not been documented by historians. They hadn't been preserved by cultural institutions. And so I was really inspired to ask bigger questions about which histories are written, how community members preserve histories for themselves, and how they pass them to the next generations. My book, The Injustice Never Leaves You, recovers a brutal period of anti-Mexican violence in the early 20th century. This was a period of state-sanctioned racial terror that included acts of lynchings, massacres, racially motivated homicides, and police violence and police murder. In some cases, these histories have been hidden, but at worst, these histories have been celebrated. I do deep archival research. And what I've found is that so many of those archives are actually full of false reports, false records, the descriptions of events that were provided, in many cases by the aggressors themselves, were taken as truth. One of the cases that I write about in my book is the Bodmeet Massacre of 1918, in which a group of U.S. cavalry and Texas Rangers and local residents in the middle of the night woke people from their beds, separated 15 men and boys from their families, and they were massacred. This is an event that at the time was covered by the press as a successful effort by law enforcement to suppress banditry. Survivors of the massacre, the wives, the children, the grandparents, fled to Mexico, and they gave descriptions of what took place. They testified, they gave depositions, and they called for the members of this mob to be arrested and prosecuted. And they, like so many families, never saw justice. But the descendants never forgot. They continued to seek justice for decades, and generations of descendants have insisted on a truthful account of the massacre, finally being acknowledged by the state but also by the public. The way that I had learned the history of racial violence in the United States had really been segregated. People thought about anti-Black violence, anti-Mexican violence, anti-Asian violence, and anti-Native violence, but very rarely were these studied together. And so mapping violence is a project that is using digital tools to not only create an archive of cases of racist violence, but to make them publicly available by mapping them and creating digital memorials. We think it's important for people to learn from these histories, not just from the tragedies, but also from the long struggle for social justice. And so Refusing to Forget is an educational nonprofit that's committed to commemorating this history of anti-Mexican violence, but also to commemorating the histories of people who fought this injustice. We've collaborated with museums to curate exhibits, historical commissions, and also with public school teachers. I see a responsibility to calling out injustice in all of its forms, and I see a professional responsibility for myself as a historian to share the lessons of the past so that they can shape the challenges that we are facing today.